All right. So my name is Shanda Antuna, and I am one of the ed tech coaches here in Canyon School District. Um, I work at Brookwood Elementary, Sandy Elementary, and Copperview Elementaries. Um, and then I have a co-presenter here today, Maxine D. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Maxine D. And I was in ed tech last year, but this year I am a, the new TPAC coach. So that just basically means they put achievement coach and an ed tech coach together into one role. So I am at Oakdale Elementary this year. So she's superwoman and she gets to do all of it this year. <laughs> but she is totally capable of it so lots of help from <laughs> yeah. okay so today you're here for a bitmoji classroom tutorial um so many of you have probably seen floating around whether it's on facebook or canvas or instagram this new bitmoji kind of craze within education so we're just going to go through a few of the basics on what you might want to do to create a bitmoji classroom and you can see here our learning intentions for you. So we're gonna learn how to create a Bitmoji account on your phone and then create your little avatar. Um, we're gonna learn how to add the Bitmoji Google Chrome extension on and then find poses that you'll wanna use. Um, we're gonna learn how to use Google Slides and templates to design backgrounds in classrooms. We'll be able to create links within those slides and then embed the slides into Canvas. And your success criteria for today is that I know I am successful when I can use Bitmojis in Google Slides and then upload it to Canvas. Okay, so let's just jump on in and I get to take these first two intentions. So we're gonna start by creating a Bitmoji account on your phone and learning how to use that. So this, I'm gonna switch my screens that I'm presenting here. And um, so, you know, this app is available both on iOS and Android. So whether you have um, an iPhone or an Android phone, you should be able to do this. The, the app itself might look slightly different between the two, but it should be pretty similar. So I am here on my phone and I'm going to go to my app store and just type in Bitmoji. And it's just this first one that comes up and I'm gonna download it. Yours might have a get sign if you don't have it already. Go ahead and download. Hopefully that goes quickly today. Perfect, and I'm gonna open up that. So to create an account, if you have Snapchat and you wanna to continue to use that, you can. I'm gonna sign up with email today. It asks for your birthday just for purposes of um, younger kids. They don't want really young kids in here, so I usually, honestly don't even give my right birthday. I just make up a birthday somewhere around the year I was born <laughs> so that they know I'm old enough to be doing this. And then I'm gonna put in my email. And you'll wanna make sure you remember which um, email you use because when you get it on your laptop, you have to sign in with the same account. So make sure you're remembering what you do. I'm just making up a fun one here, guys. Okay. So once you get in, you're going to see something like this. Um, and this is where you're creating your avatar. And obviously the point of Bitmojis is that you're making it look something like you. Um, you can continue, you can start with a selfie, you can do it from scratch. Selfies are fun because it kind of gives you a little um, what it thinks you would look like. So I'm gonna do my selfie here. Ooh. So you can see, oh, it's already giving me a few options without me having to create my own, which is kind of fun. So I'm just gonna pick one of those and continue. And then I can go ahead and I can customize this to be whatever I want it to be like. So if I think that my skin tone's a little different or whatever, I'm definitely a lot more white than that. So, um, and then go through hair and I'm not gonna go through all of these things right now, but they have tons of options to customize. You can go through um, all kinds of stuff. I'm just gonna change my eye color on there, okay. 
So you can go through all different kinds of facial features. You can go through different kinds of body features. And then I'm just gonna go to um, dressing myself so that I can have a fun little outfit to start school with on my Bitmoji classroom. And they've got lots of things on here. I'm gonna try and find something that looks nice and teacherish. Okay. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just save my new Bitmoji. Okay, and at this point, I am done with the app. Okay, I don't need this app right now anymore. I'm gonna actually switch over to Chrome. So I'm gonna stop presenting my phone and go back to presenting on the screen here. By the way, while I am switching, if you're having any questions as we go through this, um, feel free to throw them in the chat box on the side. And as I'm talking, Maxine will answer questions. And when she's talking, I'll be the one to answer the questions. So, okay. Okay, so now you can see this screen. So I am gonna start by going to my Chrome web store. And I just Googled Chrome web store. You can also go to just chrome.google.com. And this is where I can get all kinds of different extensions. You can see it's actually popped up right here. Um, but if yours didn't pop up right there, you can search the store for Bitmo Bitmoji. And I'm just gonna click on that. And then you'll see up in the corner, it has the little blue button that says add to Chrome. So I'm gonna add this to Chrome. I'm gonna make sure that I'm okay with all of these um, permissions and click add extension. Okay, you'll notice when I did that, it brings me to the Bitmoji site. And this is where I need to remember that email address and password that I used to create that account. And I'm gonna sign in with that. That's right here. Just as I tell you guys, so I'll remember your password. There we go. Okay, once it is logged in, I can actually leave this right here because all I have, are, all I need to worry about now is my extension that shows up here. So I'm gonna get out of that. And then I just happen to have quite a few extensions, so I have to use this little puzzle piece here, but yours might show up here and it will just have this little Bitmoji icon on it. So when I'm ready to insert a Bitmoji into a classroom, and don't worry about creating your classroom yet, Maxine's gonna talk about how to do that. But when I am ready to insert my Bitmoji into my classroom, I go to that extension, and it will be signed in from what I just created. And now it's gonna give me that little avatar that I made in all sorts of fun little stickers. Um, for things like a classroom, we wanna find, be able to find poses. So maybe not something that has all of these words and other scenes around it. We want just the Bitmoji in a pose. So all I have to do is just search pose and it's gonna bring up my Bitmoji in just all a whole bunch of different types of poses. So I um, can go through and decide which one will fit. Yes, Maxine. Shanda, I don't think we are seeing, I maybe it's just my screen, but we're not seeing the pop-up for the you not seeing that? Okay. Um, I'm wondering if we have to switch from. I can do that. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. I'm probably right on that. Okay. I'll share that whole screen. Okay. Does this look a little bit better, Maxine? Can you yes, see my um, let's, up here? let's try the Bitmoji extension again. Okay. So I'm going to click on Bitmoji. Perfect. All right. Okay, so that's what you should what you should see. Thank you for stopping me. Um, so once you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and search for pose up here in the search bar, and then it's going to give me just a bunch of different options of different types of poses. Um, and I'm just going to pick one, and it says right click and choose copy image from the menu. So I'm going to right click click on that, and I'm going to copy my image. Then I'm just going to come to wherever it is, my Bitmoji classroom that I want to put it in. And I paste, and there is my Bitmoji. Okay. I'm going to turn this time over to Maxine. She'll talk about how to create the classroom itself.
All right. Hello, everyone. So we are going to go ahead and just do a little bit of creating Bitmoji from scratch. But I will share with you guys a template that I created and a template that another EdTech Katie Schmolt has created, which already has a lot of accessories and images. But just for your sake, if there is anything that you want that's not in the template, this is how you do it. So for my side, we're just going to go over the last three learning intentions to how to use a Google slide, how to use the templates, how to link in between Google slides. And I'll show you why that's important and how to embed slides to canvas and post the banner if you choose to just use the banner. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up a new Google slide. And that's, yeah, <laughs> that's, um, what sums up my relationship with my fiance. But pretend this is a blank Google slide and there is nothing in it. So I just go back to CSD docs or I can go to docs.google. And then from here, I just click new, Google slides, and then I'll open up a blank presentation. So with Bitmoji, I kind of think of it as just layering. First, we want the background, then we want the floor, then we put our furniture where we want it to go, and then we put our Bitmoji. So the first thing that we want to do is search for a background. And there's so many different websites that you can search backgrounds at, but my favorite is a website called Pixabay. So Pixa, P-I-X-A, eay.com and it's just a lot of free images and royalty free images just so that it saves you with copyright issues so i just want maybe a watercolor background because i'm loving watercolor right now so i just type in watercolor and search i always make sure that i filter it out so that i'm only seeing free images so if i go into Sorry, um, where is it? There usually is a filter one, so pause for a second. Usually there's a filter button, but it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for something watercolor that I like. Ooh, I really like this watercolor texture. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And what I do is just right click I copy the image and then I just go back to my presentation and then paste it in. And there is my background. So I'm just going to make sure that I extend it all the way from side to side to side. And then the next thing that we need to make sure that we do is a floor because our Bitmoji needs somewhere to stand on. So in the same website in Pixabay, I just type in floor and there's several different images of floor and I kind of like the cool wood looking floor so I'm just gonna go ahead oh I really like this empty room wood floor so I'm just gonna click on this and it's totally fine if there's a wallpaper in the back because I'll just show you how to crop it so the same um, steps I'm gonna right click copy image go back to my presentation and then I'm gonna paste and then from here, there's going to be a little crop tool up here. And I'm just going to hit crop image. And I'm just going to drag it down so it only shows me the floor. And I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller so it's, it's not all floor. And then I'll hit crop again. And now it should give me a beautiful little clip. And then I'm just going to do the same thing and extend it out. And there's your wallpaper. And there is your floor. Um, with any type of furniture, it is the exact same steps. The only difference that I use, that I do is when I'm looking for a chair or a desk or plants or anything else, I try to add the word PNG because that means transparent or follow it by the word transparent because that will pull up images that have a transparent background so that you don't have that white box that goes over the image. So this one has a transparent background because you see the checkerboard and you're just gonna go ahead and copy 
same thing, and then paste. And there is a chair for you. And you are gonna go ahead and follow that same process until you have the classroom that you want. So here is a classroom that I just created that has like a desk and I even tried to find images of my cats. You can personalize it however way you want. Is there any questions so far? Awesome. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and create links in a Google slide. And the reason why we would want to create links is so if you want to make it into an interactive classroom, then students can click on different items in the, I guess, Bitmoji classroom, and it leads them to their different experiences. And I'm just gonna show you an example of one. So here is a Bitmoji classroom that I actually took from one of my groups. And it has a bunch of different slides. So the home page, kind of like in Canvas, we've got our home page that houses all of the links. So when I present it or when I put it into Canvas, if I click on, oh, for Monday, here are my assignments, it links to the Monday page. If I go back to home, it goes to my home screen. If I want to click on a library because I want to maybe listen to a book, then it leads me to a library. And it also, in the library, all of these don't lead to Google Slides, but they lead actually to videos outside of the classroom. So as long as the students are not on a CSD Chromebook, they'll be able to access the YouTube videos. But again, with Canvas, if you embed the YouTube videos and ask your EdTech about this, if you ask, if you embed the YouTube videos into your Canvas, it will play for the students. So you can link these to a different Canvas page, but I'm just gonna show you. So maybe your students want to use, well, listen or read the Invisible Boy. If they click on that, it leads them to the Invisible Boy reading. And then, so I'm gonna go back and click home. So in order to click link to different slides, it's actually fairly straightforward. So what you're gonna do is first upload the image that you want. So for example, let's go back to my Bitmoji classroom and I want them to link to, I'm just gonna put that in there and pretend that is super helpful. I want them to link to this page because I want them to see Misty struggling with the computer and maybe this will be like their username how to log into Pearson Realize, which is Savas now. And then you can put in the directions here, right? So we're gonna go into our homepage and I want this whiteboard right here to be how to access the boss. So all I have to do is click on the text box or click on the image, whichever one you want to link. And you're going to right click, Ooh, hold on. right click. And then right below, there should be a little, I guess, a little button that says link. When Once you click link, you can either paste an external link. So a Canvas page or a YouTube or um, Pearson Realize itself or you can link to a different slide in the presentation. So if I click on this drop down, I know that this is slide two. So I'm gonna go ahead and click slide two. You never wanna say next slide or last slide because if you add more slides in between one and two, then it'll just go to the next slide instead of the slide that you intended. So always make sure that you're looking at the number and going into two. And one thing great about Google Slides is if you do put a slide in between one and two, but you linked it to this slide, it'll change it automatically. So as long as you're labeling it one, two, three, four, you are good to go. So slide two and make sure to click apply. So now when I'm presenting or when it's embedded in Canvas, if my students click on this, they'll go into my slide two. Um, and then it's the same with external links. If I get, uh, Pearson Realize logo, 
I'm just going to copy, copy that real quickly. And I want them to click on this to go into Pearson Realize. I'm just going to go ahead and do the two finger click. And then I'm going to click on link. And usually it's there somewhere. Oh, maybe not. So I'm going to go ahead and I forget that Google Slides is weird. But I'm going to create a transparent shape. So I'm going to click on shape, shape, and then a rectangle. And then I'm just going to drag it over so it kind of blocks it. And the only thing I'm going to have to do is click on the fill color and then click transparent. Now it should let me link. Awesome. So once I click on link, I can type in the Savas Realize and click apply. And so when I present, this little button will take me to how to log in. But if I go home, then this button right here will take me to my Pearson Realize. I know it's a lot, but it'll be recorded and <laughs> you can walk through it step by step. Um, is there any questions that I need to answer before I move on to embedding? Somebody just asked about being able to link um, a screencast of them reading a book. Yeah. And you are definitely able to do that. You just use the URL from the screencast and post it just like you did with that Savas Realize. Yep, and so I'm just gonna show you how to do that real quick. Let's go to a screencast software that I use. So let's go to one of my looms. And then I just go and copy the link of my screencast. And I'm gonna go to back to my classroom. And I want, maybe I want my computer to be the video. And again, you can't link a picture, so you have to create a transparent shape. So again, clicking on shape, shape, rectangle or circle, doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and make that, put it over the computer, and then I'm going to click on fill color and transparent. And if you don't like that line right over there, you can also make your border color transparent. And from here, you can right click, link, paste your screencast and apply. So when your students are looking at it, once they click here, they'll go into your screencast of you reading your book. All right, so the very last thing is embedding it into Canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Canvas page. And as you can see here, I have a Bitmoji banner and this is just a still image. There's nothing that you need to do here. There, it's not clickable. So it's just kind of a banner that I like to have in my homeroom. And the steps are all the same. The only difference is instead of embedding it, and I'll show you. Oops. I'll show you how to do that later. So let's go ahead and log into my Canvas real quick. Is there questions? I heard voice okay so i'm gonna go oh thank you so much i'm gonna go ahead and enter my d demo course and i'm going to go and i want my bitmoji classroom on the front page because maybe you're doing a back to school welcome activity so i'm just going to click on edit i'm going to delete my gif real quick and then over here where it says more external tools, it's the V, you're going to click on more external tools and you're going to drop down until you see Google Apps. Once you click on Google Apps, you'll be able to search through your Google Drive for your Bitmoji Classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and look for my classroom. So there it is. So I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to click on the link that says embed. And this enables it so your students won't be able to edit anything on your Google Classroom. They'll be able to click through, but they won't edit it at all. Once I'm done embedding, I click Save. And now my students can go ahead and click through my Google Classroom. 
if for some reason I don't want to do this and I just want the banner, I just want it to be a still image, then all I have to do is go back to my classroom and take a screenshot. Welcome to Miss D's page. Delete that. And to do a screenshot, you just do Shift, Command, and 4. Shift, Command, 4. And then it'll give you the circle with the plus. And you're just going to click and drag it over the image. So I'm just going to click and drag it. And now that screenshot is on my desktop. So if it, where did it go? Oh, right there. So there's my screenshot. So that's how I convert it into um, a, an image. And then I'm just going to rename that as my, if it'll let me rename it, technology banner. And then to upload it into Canvas, it's the same as uploading any image. You're just going to go to home page, or I mean your Canvas course. You're going to click edit. And then if I want it at the very top, I make sure that the blinky line is at the very top. And then I click on images. I click on upload new image. I choose a file. I click on Bitmoji banner and I click open. And then I make sure to put my alt text because it doesn't let you upload without it. And then select upload. And it'll magically appear up there and you can save it. And so now you've got a still image or you can have a classroom. Um, I will be sharing a template with you guys if I can find it, where did it go? So I will be sharing a template with you guys. Um, it is somewhere in my CSD docs. Oh, it's here. But this enables you to create a copy of the template that I created with the help of the wonderful Katie Schmoll. Um, but basically it gives you a step-by-step -step on how to create a banner. So it's not the classroom that links and everything, but you can use the images here to create your linkable Google Classroom. But here you just have a ton of different backgrounds, a ton of different floor plans, and accessories that are already transparent. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it into the chat so that you guys can all make a copy. So once you click on that link, it'll just automatically go into your Google Drive. And the next thing you can see there, we have a couple of people who love your Canvas buttons and would like to have you email them some how-tos on making Oh, that. yes, for sure. I can do that. I have an Instagram tutorial. <laughs> um, I have a question, it's Trish. Yeah. Uh, being a person of little or no patience, is there any chance at all you can send this to us? Because we're all, I think we're all trying to use our time, you know, as efficiently as possible. So to wait till it potentially comes out on, uh, you know, through Canyons U, can you send the recording? Can you share the recording? Also, I just wanted to introduce you to one more great thing. So if you guys have a Facebook, there is this group called Bitmoji Craze. So I'm gonna show it to you real quick. Bitmoji what? Bitmoji Craze. So I'm just gonna pull up my Facebook and then it's called Bitmoji Craze for Educators. And in this private group, there are a bunch of classrooms already created, a bunch of resources created. I just actually pulled out this math manipulative classroom from the Bitmoji craze because I thought it was really cool. But basically this teacher created it so that when students were doing math at home, they could click on one of these um, math manipulative buttons and it leads them to an external mm -hmm. website that allows them to visualize their math process, right? That's cool. And so I would highly recommend going to Bitmoji Craze for Educators because as you can see here, 
if I just click on the topics, they sort it out by ELA, math, elementary, secondary, arts, or PE, or design, if you want escape room, like they have all of these different categories. Oh, there's even Harry Potter classrooms that will get you started. I'm addicted to this group. <laughs> Okay, are there any other questions? And yes, we will get, as soon as we get this recording, we will make sure we send it to anybody who wants it immediately. Okay. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, um, we are gonna go ahead and let you go. Thank you guys for joining us with our little Bitmoji tutorial today and good luck with your creating. Thanks so much. Really fun. Thank you. Great way to end the week. <laughs>